welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is Claire and this is going to be the start of a I was gonna say weekly reading vlog but I'm hoping this doesn't take a week so maybe more of like a weekend reading vlog but it's Thursday point is we're gonna be reading and I'm gonna be trying to finish up my books I have a physical book I'm almost done with and an audio book I'm almost done with and granted this has taken me a while because I basically didn't read anything physical during the month of August because I was just so busy and dealing with moving and I was like too exhausted to even read before bed but I have I think exactly a hundred pages left maybe a little less than a hundred I am on chapter 43 page 286 of Emma. I did a little bit of reading this morning and I'm going to try to focus on reading more throughout today and tomorrow to see if I can just get through the rest of it. Now, I have not read Emma before, although I have read Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. And I'm a big, big fan of Jane Austen movies. My favorite thus far being the 2007 than Kira Knightley Pride and Prejudice, although my mom swears by the BBC Pride and Prejudice miniseries, which I have not seen yet. Part of the reason I've even read Emma is because earlier this summer I watched the 2019 release of Emma, which I just loved and I'm going to talk more about that in a second but then one of my closest friends who's a big reader herself read a ton of Jane Austen books mainly the the three that I've mentioned and she said Emma was her favorite and since that wasn't one that I've read before I was like okay let's do it and my mom owns these incredibly charming copies of the book she got them like 30 years ago they're so old school like the text itself looks and feels like it was printed on an old style printer like the letters are ever so slightly off sometimes and there's no publisher page like i don't it doesn't say who published it or printed it just that it is printed in the united states of america it's so quaint and charming and i actually really like physically reading it it also has like the uneven pages at the end which are just my favorite thing i adore that in books Oh, and it smells good. I love the physical copy of it. So, like I said, I watched the 2019 movie, Emma. I think it captures the like whimsical, witty, kind of low stakes charm of Emma. But I will say, spoilers for Emma, I suppose, for both the movie and the book. With the movie, we spent basically every scene with Emma and I felt like the focus was very much on Emma's relationship with Harriet and then Emma's relationship with Mr. Knightley. With reading the actual book, and I think part of this is just the writing style, I mean this is like a 200 plus year old book, it doesn't feel like Emma is nearly as much of the star of the show and if anything I am most intrigued by Frank Churchill and Jane Fairfax's covert relationship and I think in the book it is so well done just like how ridiculously subtle it is but in a way that's so clever and I am just desperate to like read more about it and for like everyone else to figure out what's going on I just got done with the chapter where everyone went to Mr. Knightley's estate and Jane Fairfax left in a hurry and kind of told Emma to like just let her go, let her walk home alone, tell people that I've left once they figure it out and Emma's like let me get you a carriage and she's like no do not do that I just want to be alone I just want to be with my thoughts and you get the sense that she's really upset by something but you can't tell what and then Frank finally comes in because he's late and he's just also like really angry and Emma's like oh this man is just so easily irritated by the heat and he's just like oh I can't believe I saw Jane walking home alone er, er. I don't know it was just such a like because <laughs> you can just feel the tension between these two side characters and so because of the movie I'm like really looking forward to when Emma and Mr. Knightley finally have their kind of 
either confrontation or comeuppance with their feelings towards each other and it definitely feels like it's, it's taking its sweet 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 time in this book as for my audiobook you guys might recall from previous reading vlogs that i am working my way through brandon sanderson's the way of kings which is the first book in the stormlight archives series and this audiobook is 46 hours long that is a long ass audiobook. <laughs> that all being said, I have a six hours and 10 minutes remaining. And I don't want to get into spoilers for this one too much, but things are happening. <laughs> Part of the thing that keeps me going is knowing how good uh, Brandon Sanderson is with his endings and how he's like basically renowned for his epic climaxes and I feel like we're like really getting to that point and six hours just feels like nothing compared to the previous 40. There was a moment there in the middle and when I was only like 20 to 30 hours in where I definitely felt a lull in the story. It was kind of taking me a hot minute to get through surely because I felt it was kind of slow and dragging and kind of like, okay, what is the point? What are we here for? But now, like grand things are happening. People are figuring things out. People are doing things. Bridge four is getting so cool. And I am, I'm, whew, I'm excited. I like look forward to listening to this book. So anyway, that is what I'm up to. I'm actually about to walk Yukon and listen to Brandon Sanderson while I'm on my walk, but there will be plenty of reading, so I will check back in with you guys in a little bit. Hey, so I just got back. I think I am now under five hours into The Way of Kings. It's crazy because it's like I just don't know how it's all going to culminate. I suspect that all the storylines will come together but I well I guess I kind of know how like Dalinar and Kaladins might but I don't know how Shallan fits in there or Yesna or any of that like I can kind of see it and I suspect that they're going to be major players towards the end maybe I don't know there's only five hours left but anyway I'm going to eat and just take some time to read so I will check back in with you guys once I'm further into Emma. Hey guys, so a little bit of a book update. I'm gonna be taking Yuki out on a walk here in a second, so I'll definitely be listening to more of that. I feel very confident in finishing that this weekend. But Emma, I am now on page 294, and I just got done with the scene. It was the most effective scene for me in the movie because I wasn't expecting it. I didn't realize that this is where um, a lot of the conflict would come out of but when they're going on their hike and looking at the countryside and Emma says something very rude and insensitive to Miss Bates and Mr. Knightley has to have a bit of a stern word with her afterwards and basically shame her for being so unkind to somebody whose life position is on the downturn and it was wild reading it because the dialogue verbatim basically was how it was in the 2019 movie so i really really liked that my friend who read these books has not seen the 2019 movie but has seen the trailer for it and she was kind of turned off because i guess in the trailer there's a little bit of the scene where mr knightley's telling emma off and she thought the actor who played mr knightley who i loved but she thought that he was too like like passionate or angry and that's just like not the vibe that she got in the book the mr knightley that she got in the book was a lot more controlled and distant but in a very sexy way i will admit that when mr knightley kind of tells off emma there's not a lot of context as to exactly how mr knightley is feeling in that moment it's just a big block of text so that block of text can be interpreted i think in many a different ways but i felt the little bit of passion in this i think he definitely feels a little bit of responsibility over emma partially because of her youth and partially because he's her friend and he was just genuinely like upset and embarrassed for her. I don't know, I felt even reading it 
that there was like that little bit of passion. He's not a character that generally has a lot of exclamation points in his dialogue, but there were some in this particular scene. So I was like, ooh, Mr. Knightley's kind of mad. Um, but that's literally what I was working with and I do have the movie context in my head too. But I like that. I like thinking that Mr. Knightley was kind of like upset. I think that humanizes him. But like I said, I'm about to walk the puppy, listen to the Way of Kings, come back, and then do some more reading. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I think today is going to be a very, very exciting reading day. I think this will be the day that I finally finish the Way of Kings because I only have an hour and 45 minutes left. As for Emma, I'm on page 314 and there are 378 pages and physically reading a book obviously takes me a little bit longer than listening to one which is why I feel very confident in the fact that I'll actually be able to finish this and the amusement park that I draw caricatures at this Saturday is having their Oktoberfest so I'm going to be driving across town to go to a Halloween shop to look for a cute little like tavern wench costume barmaid costume so during that drive, going to these different stores, I should definitely be able to finish The Way of Kings. And I am at such a sweet part right now. And what seemed to be the climax for both Kaladin and Dalinar. And now I'm at Shalon's chapter, which has also just been wild. And it's hard to talk about it without getting into spoilers. I'm definitely going to make a video about my feelings about Way of Kings. And then Emma's just one of those I'm going to have to dedicate some time to. So actually, I think right now, before I head out to do my Halloween shopping, I'm going to try to get through a chapter, then spend a lot more time reading later today. Good afternoon. This is the same day, um, I know I changed sweaters on you guys, but the Halloween shopping was a huge success and I only have an hour left of Way of Kings. I can't believe it's actually taking me this long, but I was on the phone with my mom and my friend for a while, so that kind of cut into my audiobook time. It's just getting so good. It was almost painful for me to pull away from it, but I had to get some video editing done. You can probably hear my laptop working really, really hard in the background. But now it's a little rainy, a little gloomy. I'm over caffeinated. I feel cozy. So I'm going to try to get some Emma reading done. And Emma update. Emma spoilers. I reached the part that I was so excited to get to where Frank Churchill confirms to the world his secret engagement with Jane Fairfax and that they have been engaged for like six months on the down low and just everyone's shock and I love just knowing that Mr. Knightley was right all along and I also reached the part where Harriet confesses her love or like infatuation with Mr. Knightley to Emma and because of that Emma's just like wait <laughs> I'm in love with Mr. Knightley which like yeah girl me too. I'm at page 324 so I only have like 40 more pages to go I'll see how much I can get done in this sitting. If I'm diligent I'm pretty confident that I could get through this book today too which would be awesome. started at the beginning of this vlog which I think is kind of fun because last night and I just couldn't film it because it was late I was exhausted but last night I finished both The Way of Kings and Emma so The Way of Kings looking back for me I'm not sure the length of this book was necessary or did the story justice sometimes I think it actually detracted from some of the best aspects of it. That being said, the last like three hours were so fun and everybody because we have different POVs and storylines and they just each got their own fun fantastic ending and I ended the book excited to start the next one. I don't know if I will start it right away. I might, I haven't decided yet, but I'm extremely interested in continuing at least to the second book. Partially because of what the ending of The Way of Kings 
revealed about the overall plot and also what it seems to be setting up for book two just seems so fun and way more exciting and interesting than book one <laughs> so i don't know i'm pretty invested i spent like the last half hour before i went to bed looking up way of king's fan art so i could get a sense of what all these different characters look like and what the parshendi looked like and the shattered plains so you know stay tuned to see if i end up venturing down into the cosmere further um and then i finished emma which i was really excited to do i was worried that i wouldn't be able to it was perfectly delightful, very much on par with what I saw in the movie. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. I had a blast. I legitimately laugh out loud so much reading this book. Jane Austen just has some phrases in here that like kind of took me by surprise. This is definitely a product of me being a modern reader, reading something older, I had this issue with Dracula where it's like, I guess I was just kind of itching for a little bit more of that cinematic climax that you do get in the movie, probably because it knows that it's dealing with modern audiences, but the book, it's not that it falls flat, it just, it just goes about pacing and these kind of conflicts and resolving them in a much more low-key way however the, like my biggest takeaway is how much i love mr knightley <laughs> and how much i honestly want to rewatch the movie and there is something about the world that jane austen creates that's very charming and endearing and just makes you want to live in it longer and i think it translates so well to film because then you get to see you know like the the beauty of the english countryside and their fashion which is obviously very foreign to us now and just the lifestyle of how these people lived 200 years ago which of course Jane Austen couldn't have understood when she wrote this like how different things would become so it becomes a very like transportive experience. Emma was a delightful read if you're into Jane Austen or into that time period obviously it's a classic for a reason but that is where i'm gonna leave you guys thank you so much for spending this reading time with me let me know what you are currently reading down in the comments below and i will see you guys next time bye